on Focal Point. The healing continues on the Michigan State campus. We have the latest information about when the MSU Union and Berkey Hall will reopen. Where can you find art made of bones, a ton of bugs, and DC Comics? Find out where, coming up on Focal Point. A group of students spread color and joy at the Holy Festival. And a look at the Spartan Spring football season. We'll have all this and more. Focal Point starts now. Good morning and happy Friday. Welcome to Focal Point. I'm Sophia Miller. And I'm Sarah Lofner. Starting off today's show, the Michigan State Capitol is the site of a march today. Our own Jordan Wilcox is live at the Capitol in downtown Lansing. Jordan, what can you tell us about what's going on over there? Yes, the people of Lansing are out here in front of the state capitol in protest of recent legislation passed targeting LGBTQ plus community. I talked to the organizers earlier and the protesters are demanding protections for services such as legal name changes as well as gender affirming health care. As you can see, we have the speaker out here, we have signs, we have flags, and we have a big sign calling for mass action. Unfortunately, the weather is impacting the turnout, but nonetheless, people are still out here and sharing their voice. That's all that's happening on the Capitol, but on, live on Michigan State University's campus, we have reporter Zach Slowick out to give you the details for the reopening of Berkey Hall and the Student Union. Zach? Yes, Jordan, we're here at Berkey Hall. On February 13th, a gunman walked into this building and then into classrooms and started firing. He then worked his way down the street to the MSU Union, where he continued shooting. As we all know, three died and five others were injured. Both buildings have been closed since the violence. Now, after inclusive conversations between students, staff, and faculty, the decision has been made on the reopening of the two buildings. The Union will reopen on April 3rd, but the food court will not. It will stay closed for now, but the Spartans Mini Mart lounges and computer labs inside will all be open. As for Berkey Hall, here it will remain closed throughout the fall semester, so no classes in this building this summer or fall. Those classes will be spread out throughout campus and relocated. Next week, EAP as well as CAPS will have support employees in the building with therapy dogs for the opening of the union. The union is incredibly important to the Spartan community, and that is shown by the fact that it has been open for nearly a century. I'm Zach Slowick at Berkey Hall, Focal Point News. Sophia, Sarah, back to you. Thank you, Zach. Even more changes are coming to Michigan State's campus, and I don't know about you, Sarah, but I plan my walk to class around going to Wells Hall to get a cup of coffee. Well, that Starbucks is closing, but fear not. It's just moving, and not that far away. This is good, y'all. It's been Maria Johnson's morning wake up for four years. Before chemistry, she stops here to mix her own formula. All right, what can we get for you? A venti strawberry acai lemonade. No strawberries. It's Maria's routine. The Wells Hall Starbucks has been a staple for students on the Michigan State campus for 10 years. Can I do the uh, nitro col for you? But this is horrible. It's closing soon. Transition's gonna be interesting for sure. This Starbucks is closing because What's a good name? it's too small. It'll be weird to not have Wells around. Nyla Stepke runs the Wells Hall Starbucks. She's talking about the future. So is MSU's Director of Culinary Marketing. We are at Sparty's in the library. Up until now, this has been a great place to research coffee. The library. But in the fall, this will be a great place to sip the coffee. The Starbucks at Wells Hall may be closing, but it's also moving just a few buildings away. So we'll be able to do some really cool things here um, and, and it'll be much more functional. Here it won't get quite as congested as it was over at Wells. Some students like Brooke Godrew are warming up to the switch, if she can still get her daily cup of joe. As long as I can still get Starbucks, I'll go anywhere, I don't care. <laughs> and the Starbucks staff can't wait. It'll be a bigger location with more space, which would be really nice. We're all looking forward to some new equipment. The only problem for Maria Johnson might be containing her joy after that first sip. After all, have a nice day. You're supposed to be quiet in a library. I'm sad that they're moving, but I'm happy right now. 
On the Michigan State campus, I'm Sophia Miller, Focal Point News. Construction at the library for the new Starbucks location will begin this summer and is set to open by the fall semester. MSU students splash in color across campus. Groups made up of South Asian and international organizations came together to celebrate a holiday called Holi. Focal Point's Isabella Martin tells us that for the students, it's like a little taste of home. It's fun. It's fun. Food, powdered packets of color, and friends. It's a holiday celebrated all over India to celebrate the coming of spring and kind of how light wins over darkness and color wins over darkness. MSU students gathered at IMEs to celebrate. Commonly celebrated in India um, and commonly for religion uh, and Hinduism, but this is going to be more of a cultural event, just kind of going around um, celebrating with our friends, just, um, you know, we're going to be throwing colors, eating nice, like, South Asian food. But it's more than just fun and games. It's a home away from home, you know, it gives that community like that sense of belonging and you know a lot of us like don't really know each other in such a big university. It brings students together. Like events like this really helps people get to know each other and students feel that community at home. Through color. Color is just you know a way to welcome spring back and kind of bring color back into our lives. You know in the winter it's kind of dark and dreary. <laughs> and for Hiba Khan she hopes activities like this. To be open with learning about new cultures you know the world is so broad and um, I'm very proud of the community I'm part of so just uh, celebrating events like these like you know I normally um, I'm Muslim so I don't celebrate holy but it is lovely to see it's such a big turnout and just celebrating with my other South Asian and not even South Asian our community's counterparts. Moving a little further west on the globe in light of the ongoing protests in Iran focal points Arman Imanpour explores the Iranian culture at MSU. He shows us what the Iranian Student Association has to say. Zang Zendegi Azadi, Jin Jian Azadi, Woman, Life, Freedom. Woman, Life, Freedom, the theme of this musical performance held at the MSU Broad Museum. The Iranian club presented a wide variety of acts, from poetry to singing to even an orchestra, to bring attention to the protests in Iran. I didn't want to make it grotesque and gruesome, but make it look like more poetic and symbolic because sometimes that is more impactful. To Parisa, these performances were much more than just entertainment. I was very emotional during the whole thing and I was holding my tears because um, it was just, I'm watching this, but people are living this. Arriving to the U.S. only three weeks ago, Armand was watching and living this. Actually, I witnessed so many protests and uh, like so many videos all around the, all around the Iran that was, uh, that, was, uh, that was going viral. This is not a thing that anyone wants to witness. Future with women in power, with peace, understanding. If I planted the seed, I can say that I accomplished my mission as the artist. With Focal Point, Arman Imanpour reporting. Although the protests in Iran have slowed down, the fight for women's rights there continues. College students are making an impact outside of campus, and some are even doing it in style. Focal Point's Angela Solomon has more on young designers in the fashion industry. Detroit is no stranger to setting trends, especially in fashion. Uh, this weekend, show? the annual Dream's Most Wanted Fashion Show took place showcasing the creativity and designs of some of Detroit's natives. The show featured designers from all around Michigan, but college students stole the show both on and off the runway. I'm currently a student at the University of Michigan. I'm a junior, um, and I've been having my brand for probably about the past two years. Um, I sew and design everything in my brand, and yeah, designing has been my passion. When you're designing clothes, I feel like you, your ultimate goal is for people to be able to see it in a positive light and see it in the limelight. Like, one of my biggest fuels when it comes to like designing and like showing my work is um, especially like being an artist first. Like I want people to see my work and um, but yeah, that's why, we're, that's why I'm doing the show. The show sold out with an audience of over 300 attendees. I think like 
students right now are the most important in the fashion industry. Um, I would say like we're pushing out the old and we're bringing in the new 100%. Loud, there's a lot of push for these younger designers because we have a platform to be able to take over. So that's that's my goal as a 20 year old student from Detroit. I'm here to take over. So this has been Angela Solomon reporting for Focal Point News. More local designers are planning to showcase their designs this August in Detroit. Now I know we've been getting pretty sick of that nasty weather, but it looks like we're on storm watch for the rest of the afternoon. When we come back, we'll take a look at the forecast with Isabella Gorsick. And Veronica Bolanos will have our sports updates. It's all coming, um, coming up next on Focal Point. Welcome back to Focal Point. This week, Mother Nature's been pretty indecisive. We got a little taste of sunshine, wind, and even a little snow. Focal Point's Isabella Gorsick has you covered with the latest forecast. She joins us live in the studio. Isabella, spring supposedly arrived 11 days ago, but the only thing I felt is winter. Happy Friday, guys, and yes, Sophia, the upcoming week's weather will still be offering a variety of conditions. Last week's snow will soon turn into April showers. Now let's kick off weather by taking a look at the national map. Over here on the west coast, we're seeing some warmer temperatures. Los Angeles with a high of 63, currently sitting at 59. Phoenix right ahead of LA sitting at 67. And Houston is experiencing even warmer temperatures around 79 with some storms. Over here on the East Coast, New York is feeling a little bit rainy, sitting at 55 with some showers. Atlanta sitting at 63 and cloudy, and Miami is sitting pretty with a high of 80. I might just have to schedule a late spring break trip. Taking a closer look at the Great Lakes region where temperatures are starting to warm up for spring slowly but surely. Chicago is sitting at 55, Wisconsin is feeling the same at 54, and Cleveland's catching up at 49 degrees. Currently in East Lansing, we're sitting at 50 degrees. Grand Rapids is sharing some of the rain with us throughout the day, as well as the temperature as we're both sitting at 50. Detroit is feeling the same at 47 with showers, and Mount Pleasant is at 51. Taking a look at that weekly forecast, we're gonna have a rainy weekend here in East Lansing, but that rain will just turn into clouds so you can enjoy some partly sunny weather for your Sunday. And hopefully everyone takes advantage of that Sunday weather because here comes the sun. That's all we have for weather this week. Sophia, Sarah, back to you. Hopefully we'll see some warmer temperatures heading into April. You know what that means? Warmer temperatures also mean football season is approaching. So how are Mel Tucker and the Spartans preparing in the off season? We'll have all this and more coming up next. March is Women's History Month. There's about 3.9 billion women worldwide. That's about 5.1 million in Michigan alone. But even in such great numbers, women continue to fight every day for their equality. Women like Malala Yousafzai, a Pakistani female education activist, Susan B. Anthony, Rosa Parks, Anne Frank, and many more. So to end this month, wish the women around you a happy Women's History Month. I'm Veronica Bolanos with this week's sports headlines. Since our last show, the Michigan State basketball team was knocked out of the NCAA tournament in the Sweet 16 by the Kansas State Wildcats. While the Wildcats made a historic run for their program, this was a bit, there was a bit of a secret behind their success. 
Focal Point's Brendan Shabath was in New York covering the tournament and shows us why Kansas State had a groove in their step against the Spartans. The Kansas State Wildcats have played 34 games this season and only six of those was someone not named Marquise Noel or Keontae their leading scorer. And in five of those six, it was Naquan Tomlin. Tomlin not only serves as the third best scorer on this Kansas State team, but the hype man as well. By now, you've probably seen the videos. The Kansas State players accompanied by first year head coach Jerome Tang with their new pregame locker room routine. It's gone viral on TikTok and it was Tomlin's idea. But um, actually, the, the Lil Baby song, actually, Naquan picked it out. Low Down is one of my favorite songs by Lil Baby. And uh, usually in the uh, locker room, we was playing South to West Gunner, and like we was trying to like switch it up. So like I just put Low Down, and uh, it just kind of stuck. Tomlin gets credit for the song, but Tang gets credit for the clap. We've been doing a clap okay. since like the beginning of the season. Like our first exhibition game, we started doing, we was uh, doing a clap. Yeah, like that was like, like that was Coach Tang's idea. Like the clap, I think. Uh, the clap, the boombox, a coach with a little bit of swag and rhythm. All of that goes a long way for a college kid. I would say it makes you more comfortable right. and just not so tense. Like even when you're playing on the court. Just knowing that the type of coach we have is just like chill and laid back. Right. Tang's participation in the tradition goes beyond just having fun. There's a lesson in there. Yeah, he's free. Like he wants all of us, you know, when we're playing in the games, he always says us like we want to play with love, freedom, and joy. So like that's the kind of coach that uh, Coach Tang is. Every team has its unique pregame rituals. And that one was definitely insp definitely inspired the Wildcats to succeed all the way to the Elite Eight of the NCAA tournament. Over to the turf, the Spartan football team held its third week of spring practice. Questions over who will take the starting role in key positions was the focus of the weekly press conference. Star wide receiver Keon Coleman says he's ready for the challenge. Uh, you know, just uh, be the best, the best Keon Coleman I can be. And, you know, just do the normal things I always do, make plays and, you know, help my team win. So that's about it. Coleman was a part of Tom Izzo's basketball team, but did not participate this season because he wanted to focus on his football career. MSU will wrap up spring practice on April 15th at Spartan Stadium. Back to the hardwood, Kristen Haney is headed to the WNBA. The assistant coach for the Michigan State women's basketball team has accepted a position to serve on the coaching staff for the Minnesota Lynx. She was hired by Susie Merchant back in 2019 and spent the past four seasons as an assistant coach for the Spartans. The Lansing native famously helped the Spartans to a national runner-up finish in 2005. Haney was the ninth overall pick and played in the WNBA from 2005 to 2009. This will be her first professional coaching role. That's it in this week in sports. Sophia, Sarah, back to you guys in the studio. Thank you, Veronica, for our Focal Point Friday finale. Have you ever wondered where you could find that one-of-a-kind sculpture carved from bone? How about that creepy clown to sit on your fireplace mantle? Then boy, do we have the place for you, thanks to our own Isabella Gorsick. Rio Town Marketplace, a mall where one couple decided to bring their very odd business to Lansing. My husband and I, it's been our lifelong thing. That's how we met and how we kind of came together. Jennifer and her husband, John, are the owners of Voodoo's World of Odd Teaks. In the name, Voodoo's World of Oddtiques is oddities, antiques. So we always have like weird, one of a kind. We have a lot of um, things that are handmade. Um, we just look for those things that people can't find anywhere else. Things like bone art, bugs, and clowns cover the walls of the store. Every item is either homemade, one of a kind, or inspired from a classic scary movie. You know, once something sells out of here, 
there's a good chance we're not getting that type of thing back or that thing back. We have such a wide range of things, you know, um, you name it, it's here. It's inspired by John's dark art photography, Jennifer's crocheting, and together, their love for oddities. <laughs> Weird, creepy, scary, or, you know, we've always been that way. So it, it's just kind of a passion, and we just took it from there. By the end of April, the other side will be open, an expansion to Voodoo's located in the same building. So it'll be a mortuary science and paranormal museum. Voodoo's World of Odd Teaks is a place unlike any other. It brings a little slice of New Orleans to the city of Lansing. And for John and Jennifer, there is no place they'd rather be. We just have a place to go that we want to be, so it's not like coming to work. In Lansing, I'm Isabella Gorsick, Focal Point News. That is definitely one scary store. Don't you agree, Sarah? Sarah? Boo! <laughs> Got ya! I know something even scarier. I don't know about that. It's already the last day of March, and it might snow tomorrow. <laughs> You're right. Let's keep our fingers crossed that East Lansing misses out on that weather. That's all the time we have for this week's edition of Focal Point. We leave you with the live view from the rally at the Capitol. I'm Sophia Miller. And I'm Sarah Lawson. Have a safe weekend.